being conducted wrongly, and the compliance review board would remove the investigator. Um, you know, the time to call, you know, when the, when the notice was received, we decided just to discontinue the investigation. Now, the agency does that at its own peril, because once you discontinue the investigation, you basically uh, have to go with what you have if you still want to terminate. So it's well, not that there are no... Let me stop you there for a moment. Uh, the Petitioner's Council has seemed to either argue or suggest that if this compliance review panel is not has, has never been in town and never is set up pursuant to an appropriate demand at the time he was still employed, that they're just stuck with whatever findings. They can never challenge those findings of that investigator. No one will ever review those findings. There is no meaningful opportunity or fair process for the uh, terminated officer to say, wait a minute, that's not true. That person was who investigated and made that determination or that factual find. They were biased, and if you had set up the compliance review panel, you would have uh, that would have been determined. But you refused to do it, and now I'm somehow prohibited from in any way challenging these grounds for my termination. Is that the case? No, uh, Your Honor. The county's merit system allows them to appeal within 10 days of the action, so that they can present a de novo hearing to the county's personnel board. So they get to go back and challenge every one of these findings of this allegedly biased exactly. or and that, wrongful investigations. And, and I believe, as I stated in our petition, it would be far more, that would be a far more useful approach since the ability of the personnel review board, you know, he, if he goes that route, he may actually be able to be reinstated. The case law is replete, replete with uh, uh, courts finding that, you know, the, the, um, that an injunct injunctive relief under 112.534 can't be used to reinstate anybody. And if this is what their client truly wants, you know, the personnel board would give them an opportunity to do that. I didn't understand that they wanted that. I thought what they were seeking was a, a court order to, uh, to the county to impanel, to, to set up, we're using the same P-A-N-E-L, mm -hmm. to set up the compliance review panel, to establish one, okay. uh, to investigate the investigator here whose uh, investigation resulted in the uh, facts used uh, to terminate the petitioner. I thought that's what they were asking to have done, and my concern, as I said, and you've repeated is, well, there isn't any more investigation ongoing, so how would it profit us to, to order the impaneling of such a group uh, when the result would simply be to tell the investigator you're removed as the investigator? And it's, uh, that's, that's all the panel would do. Exactly. Or at least that's the result of what the panel would do. And so I might say there's nothing in the statute that makes the panel's findings binding on the personnel review board. So even if you did have a compliance review board find that there was not compliance. Yeah, I'm not so sure you're correct about that. But um, because as I read G, it says if the alleged violation is sustained as intentional by the compliance review panel, the agency had shall immediately remove the investigator. So I, I, th that doesn't look to me like there's discretion here. It looks to me like if the panel says we have ongoing violations that are intentional, there's no more discretion. Now maybe the case law puts a gloss on that and says shall means may, but uh, I, I, when I read shall, it says shall. So, but I, I'm not sure. My concern here is, and I have said and conceded that I am not I did not walk into this hearing with expertise in this matter. But I wanted to make sure that I either misunderstood the argument of Petitioner's Council or that you just disagree with it. Uh, and you're going to reassure me that, in this case, uh, Richard S. Gardner has ample opportunity to challenge every basis upon which he was terminated, even if no compliance review panel was ever or is ever uh, established. Is that the case? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I prefer yes. Okay. So that is the case. Let me put it. And they can do that at what procedure? He can do it at what procedure? The compliance review. Yeah. Uh, the personnel review board. Or personnel review. Board. Under the merit system, under the county, under Chapter 86. Of so the county he county. has that available to him right now, having been. He's telling me Mr. Kane kind of said he was or he wasn't, but I think uh, Mr. McKinnon agreed that he had been dismissed. Mm -hmm. You said he's been dismissed. 
and now he gets to go to the personnel review board and yes, challenge right. that dismissal. Um, yes. Now, do you know, and I cut them off, and maybe they were going to bring me another gold standard case on all fours, uh, but they presented me with the City of Miami versus Cosgrove, uh, 516 Southern 2nd, 1125, this third district case we just discussed momentarily. And it, it, I haven't even read the whole case, so I'm, but it does not appear to me, on quick reading and on what I heard Mr. McKinnon say about it, that it runs counter to your argument here or your position that I somehow have to, even after the officer has been terminated and dismissed, that I have to order the county to uh, uh, set up or establish this compliance review can uh, panel. Do you read this case as saying that? That you don't have to order it? That I have to order it. No, I don't read that you case. don't read it that way. No. It's Do you know of any case? Because I'm going to go back and ask them, they may have a better case than this one, or one they think is better, or one that they think I might think is better. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, but at any rate, before I do that, as an officer of the court, do you know of any case law that uh, interprets 112.534 of the Florida statutes to uh, re require or even allow the relief of the petition here to suit? No, Your Honor, I don't. And in fairness to the court, the um, statute, um, 112.534 was actually changed in 2009. Prior to that, the I believe it had only a reference to adjunctive relief. The Compliance Review Board, I think, was added in 09 in order to provide a sort of administrative remedy for investigations that may have been going awry. But still, I think that the spirit of the bill is the same in that you have, uh, it's about prospective relief during the investigation. And also, the Compliance Review Board, I'll just point this out, because nobody said it yet, but maybe everybody's sort of, maybe everybody's been understanding it. It says, it says unless, otherwise, unless the problem's otherwise remedied by the agency before the hearing, the so there is a condition even to, if you were in the middle of the investigation, there's even a condition to allow things to be cured so that before the Compliance Review Board is in panel. And the situation that might arise in that case might be, you have rights being violated, you ask for a compliance review board, and the county persists in doing, and persists in the investigation and tries to keep demanding them, then at that point you may get judicial intervention to say that, no, the county, he doesn't have to answer those questions. He doesn't have, he can sit in there with his lawyer, he can do this. And at that point, you know, they would play by, you know, they would have to, they would have to conduct the investigation according to the rules. But at this point, the investigation is concluded, and he has been dismissed. Or, or not, but in any event, he's been dismissed. No matter how good or bad the investigation was, uh, he has been dismissed, and if he wants to challenge the grounds for the dismissal, he can do so uh, before the Personnel Review Board, and, and we'll have plenty of procedural and substantive due process in, in, in connection with that proceeding. Exactly, Your Honor. Because so I'm, I'm not really conversant with in the way that I would prefer to be, if I'm making rooms here, what goes on at personnel review boards. I've never represented anyone involved in that uh, from, for either side. So I, I'm not truly all that uh, conversant with what that entails. So, but you're telling me uh, uh, Richard Gardner has opportunity to challenge this dismissal at that personnel review board proceeding. He doesn't need uh, a compliance review panel in order to arm himself to do that. Yes. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. And I'd just like to point out, if you're interested, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Jones has just referred me to a case. Uh, I don't have it on me, unfortunately, uh, but it's uh, 51 Southern 3rd 489. And that's from the first DCA, and that was uh, decided in 2010. And it Basically, what the holding in that case was is that the court held that violations in the Policeman's Bill of Rights do not provide a basis for reversing agency discipline. Again, another case that says that reinstatement is not really an option. And I know he's not asking for reinstatement here, but if he's not asking for that, then... Then what is he asking? Exactly. 